anyone would be shocked by it, especially a kid. I take a deep breath and look closer. There's something twisting around the corpses. It looks like some kind of plant vine. Are those roses? The strangely shaped thorns and the thin red petals. There appears to be there appears to be real live roses covering the corpses and carpeting the floor. My vision suddenly grows dim. Adult. I can't cover it. I see a woman's body trapped by roses. I can kind of cover the boo, but it's already kind of covered. What is this? The tragedy that happened in this room. It's as if it's all playing out in my head. I can see it. Roses. What are they doing here? Did someone plant them? Moe's voice brings me back to reality. Yeah. I can't tell them what I saw in the waking dream. I scrambled to remember the conversation. That's right, I saw the rose vines then. Yeah, that's got to be it. It's not like they just spring up on their own. But... Why would anyone do that? Did someone decorate the corpses for some kind of reason? Or did they die cap captured by the roses like I saw in my vision? <laughs> Moe screams. I'm not screaming. What's wrong? So something moved. See, over there. Back in there. No. Is something hiding in there? I suddenly search the corpse. Something flashes within the vines by its feet. Got round hand mirror. Looks like a gift from a, for a young woman. A mirror. A mirror? Mirror. I guess someone was here after all. There's a bed with a metal pipe frame. The mattress is oozing dark, dirty water. Maybe. The mattress is oozing dark, dirty water. It smells like sewage. I slide the mattress over and find a plastic sheet underneath it. Got vinyl sheet. It's pretty thick. Was it put there to protect from water damage? The top of the sheet is pitch black. At first glance, it looks like it's covered in mold. But when I spread it open, it crunches as dark red flakes fall from it. This is blood. I can't do anything but whisper, dumbfounded as I stare at the blood-stained sheet. Something murmurs in my ear, as if in reply. Their blood denies him. Part of me takes the voice seriously. I'm clearly hallucinating, but for some reason it calms me down. Still in a daze, I shine the flashlight under the bed. There! There it is again! Something's there! Moe's voice has gone very shrill. Then? I'm trying to figure out what voice to give this guy. Like, because I don't. It's men, male voices. I'm just gonna take a sip of water. Is what I'm gonna do. Hey, get, hey now, give me a break. I'm no monster, you know, I'm just a regular human being. I don't know what to do with his voice. I can't do, like, a Boston accent or anything, so. <laughs> and he's Japanese anyway. Slowly climbing, <laughs> something slowly climbs out from under the bed. It's a man in a trench coat. A, a person, what were you doing under there? The man looks bored, he scoffs. Same as you. I ran into the monster and escaped down here. Then you guys came. The man turned his back to us and jerks his chin. Anyway, I was hiding over there. I don't know how to do a Canadian accent either. His answer is believable enough, but why is he at this school to begin with? His presence raises a lot of questions. The man tilts his head a bit and peers at me, then he snorts. It seems he's seen through me. You don't look like you believe me. Guess that's only natural. I haven't told you everything either. I could, but... The man looks around at his feet. We better get out of here first. We shouldn't chat at a crime scene. I think you're right. 
Moe seems to feel the same way. Let's head back for now. Let's- that was the wrong voice. You have somewhere to go to? Good. Then let's get going. The man puts his hand on the ladder. He pauses and turns to us. The name's Satoru Mashita. I'm an ex-detective. Forgot to mention that. The man named Mashita disappears up the ladder. We follow him back up onto the first floor. But when we emerge, he's not there. Hey, take a look at this! Mashita calling to us from down the hallway. Was it like this when you guys came through? Moe pipes up, voice slightly wobbly. No, it wasn't. It wasn't like this at all. Something's creeping along the hallway. There are rose vines. Thought so. I didn't see them before either. The, mark co the mark's color grows more vivid. Early dawn. A few hours left until death closes in. Some people naturally put others on guard, even if there's no particular ill will between them. That's exactly the type of person Mashita is. Oh, you've got some nice stuff here. The moment he climbs into the car, he makes a grab for my bag. Then he starts inspecting all of my stuff. I wasn't planning on keeping a constant eye on him, but he's making it very hard not to. Moe seems like the type to stick her nose in everything, but she's suspiciously silent, as if exhausted. Are you okay, Moe? Uh huh? Uh, oh yeah, just zoning out, you know. I'm fine. She doesn't look fine, but... My other passenger is much more of a concern right now. So, were you at the school because you were investigating something? I'm not on the force anymore, just poking around for my own reasons. Something I want to check. I don't doubt what he says, but that would mean he entered the school illegally. What were you? Let me ask you one thing first. Mashita interrupts my question and points to my arm. Does that hurt? It didn't take him long to spot the mark on my wrist. Sometimes, it hurts the most whenever I'm in danger. Huh. Is that so? Mashita leans back in his seat, satisfied. I was investigating some missing people. Guess he's responding to my question now. That school came up in a number of missing person cases. Each one had some affiliation with H Elementary before they disappeared. Teachers, workers, people in the PTA, students and their family members. I was looking for them. Then... Moe speaks up from the back seat. Were those people... the corpses down there? She doesn't sound as energetic as she usually does. Did something happen after all? Is her mark... Mashita doesn't reply. Maybe he thinks the answer's obvious, or maybe replying to a kid isn't worth his time. But something bugs me about what he said. If the school was clearly suspicious, then... Of course I brought it up to my superiors. All I got for it was... He continues before I can ask, making a slashing motion across his neck. You got fired, huh? Disciplinary discharge or something about sexual harassing as her subordinate. That principal's gotta have some kind of political pull. I probably dug up something he didn't want getting out. That wasn't my plan, I never meant to uncover anything dirty. True, the school didn't, did have that suspicious room. It's not that strange to think it would have come up in some missing person cases. That would be common sense, at least. But common sense is for the world of the living. A spirit. Might have something to do with those cases. There's an awkward silence. In that sense, this isn't even a case anymore, is it? But she decides deeply. Who'd have believed it? Who would believe that there's a monster that ki that school killing? <sighs> Who would believe there's a monster in that school killing people? It's personal now. Our problem, and we're on our own. He turns his wrist over and shows it to me. On his skin is the familiar mark. You too. Yeah, I sensed it as soon as I saw yours. I had a feeling this'd be a problem. We're in the same boat, you and I. He has good instincts. We should talk more when we get back. At Cujo Mansion, there's some... I stopped myself from finishing my sentence. I shouldn't mention that for now. 
In any case, once we get back, we'll give you more details. Yeah, I'm sure that'll help him a bunch. But Mashita scoffs. Help, huh? You're underestimating me. Oh, we're over an hour in. We still have Mike. That's good. That's good. When I get out of the car, someone's there to greet us. Welcome back, mister. You too, Miss Moe. I'm glad you're unharmed. Did you find any clues about the spirit? What, so there's others? This is everyone. Huh, what a reliable group you've got. The sarcasm is practically dripping off his words. So, are you all planning on continuing to search for that key or whatever it is? We don't have anything else to go on. There's no other choice. I don't understand you. If the source of the mark is the spirit, it would be best to destroy the source, don't you think? What do you mean? The spirit exists, so all you have to do is kill it. Are you serious? Of course he's serious. He doesn't exactly look like the joking type. Even if he managed to kill it, will that really make the mark disappear? When I consider everything Mary's told me, it doesn't seem like it'd work that way. Even assuming it did, we have more fundamental problem. And how do you plan to kill it? I'll figure something out. If something exists, there's logically a way to destroy it as well. He claims he can kill spirits, yet he doesn't even know how he'll do it. Where does all that confidence come from? Don't forget, I faced him once already. If we're seriously thinking of killing him... Mashita grasps his wrist. The little shit shot some kind of thorns at me from a distance. They hit hard enough to stick in concrete. There's no way to get close to him. We have to make that a priority. Mashidi pulls something out of the heel of his shoe and tosses it at me. It's a thorn curved like a fang. The only reason I'm still breathing is because I was lucky. It won't happen next time. We need a plan. He jumps around on the things he thinks we should do. As we head to the entrance, I tell Mashita about Kujo Mansion. He takes it all in silently. Even bringing up the talking doll or say a Kujo's death doesn't trigger a reaction. Is he so unnervingly calm because he's already dealt with the supernatural? We reach the main hall, which is warmly lit. This is a strange mansion, but for some reason I feel like I've come home. Acclimatization is kind of terrifying. Welcome back, Lord Cade. That man is a mark bearer too, I see. Would you make the introductions? Mary, Mashida, Mashida, Mary, Mashida, Moe, Mashida, Sukasa, Mashida, me. I update Mary on our investigation and the strange way we met Mashida. The mirror, the underground room full of corpses, the sudden appearance of roses. I really hate to admit it, but it's clear something supernatural is at work here. And the spirit that caused all of it? Hanahiko. There's no doubt that Hanahiko is the one who put the mark in Mashida's arm, too. But... Excuse me. What kind of chance do we have against a monster that can do that? Mashida says we should kill him, but is that even possible? Hey, Cade! My train of thought is interrupted. Mashida's holding a leather-bound notebook out toward me. Read this. I picked it up in that underground room. It was caught up in a bunch of th those rose vines when I found it. It was pretty hard to get loose. Did you read it yet? I skimmed through a bit. It's got some interesting stuff. That's what he says, but he's not smiling at all. His eyes simmer with a quiet anger. Dark red marks stained the cover. I have a bad feeling, but I flip through it. Rose petals fall as they become unstuck from the pages. The notes within are very detailed. The author was intelligent and well-written. Reading through it, it dawns on me that this was written by H. Elementary's principal. The austere, meticulous letters on each page tell a ghostly, ghastly story. Records of a young adopted boy's tutoring sessions. 
The first note is from five years ago. It seems the boy adopted by the principal is small and exceedingly cute. He enjoyed wearing skirts and makeup, too. There was no denying that they truly suited a dainty, red-cheeked boy like him. But the principal had a hard time accepting such fancies. Bad habits must be corrected young to promote sound mental health, he thought. So he called it tutoring as a cover for his warped desires. They took place in the underground room. Too many prying eyes everywhere else. There was no safer place in the school at night once all the teachers had left. The principal stayed behind under the pretense of keeping watch, then tutored. He was a highly respectable teacher. He'd even made appearances on TV. There was no reason to be suspicious. The only one who noticed anything strange was the boy's homeroom teacher, but she feared the principal's power and firmly kept her mouth shut. Yep. Yes, dogs can smell the, the virus. As the notes continue, they are more and more deranged. They paint a horrible picture. It is of a totally distorted parent and child. My child gets weaker after every session. His delicate frame has grown thinner and his red cheeks are now darkened. His appearance is described in detail. There is no malice or hatred. There's just fanatical sincerity, his pride as an educator, and a terrifying smothering love. It continues like that to the very last page. There's no mention of what became of the principal and the boy. But going by the current state of each elementary, I can hazard a guess. You don't look so well, mister. What was in the notebook? Sukas appears at me. He and the boy in the notebook are about the same age. This isn't stuff you should share with a kid. I better just sum up the main points for him. That's terrible. We children are always the victim of, of ego, the ego of adults. Stupid grown-ups are irredeemable. Why he'd say that makes sense. The revolting evil of the adults and the poor boy who became a victim. But is that really the end? If Hanahiko and the boy in the notebook are connected, then the boy turned into a monster. Is that even possible? Untimely deaths produce hatred. Death does not bring it to an end. Such festering sentiments can give birth to the supernatural. Monsters, ghosts, vengeful spirits, they have many names. I believe that you have all heard of one or two such stories. Hanahiko is similar. Mary's words are hard to swallow, but after all these weird events, it only makes sense to accept them. If I turn my back into the truth, all that will await me is death. Then Hanohiko really is a monster. We must form a plan... Yes. We must form a plan based on that hypothesis. Mary is silent a moment. Incidentally, According to Lord Cade's report, there are those among you who are considering killing the spirit. I shall warn you just in case, but this, that will be very difficult to do. Why is that? I could see Machido narrow his eyes, but I made sure to speak up first. They are from the world of the dead. Just as the living cannot become more alive, the dead cannot be killed. The only thing you could possibly destroy is the cursed sentiment. So what does that mean? It is as I told you before. Death and life exist together. If that is the origin of the mark, then a way to erase it will be there. By driving away the spirit, the curse will also be eliminated. So defeating Hanahiku is how we'll be able to destroy the mark. Setting aside how he can't be killed. What exactly is the key, then? It is nothing more than a concept, so I am unsure, but... I am certain of one thing. Fate ties the spirit to its place of birth. An object there may be able to fulfill the role of the key. It is as difficult a concept to grasp, but that is just how spirits are. Determining the nature of the key, that will decide your fate. I had a feeling we'll just have to keep digging around at H Elementary. We don't know what the cursed sentiments are or the key to destroying the grudges are. Gaining the key and lifting the grudge is the only way to survive. You will be required to be callous to make use of the spirit's fear. The way to repel the spirit lies within its grudge. Remember this and be careful. Hey, wait! Mashita appears as we're getting ready to leave. Bad news. The high school girl. Miss Moe is gone. At least she's nowhere in the mansion. Speaking of which, I didn't see her when we were talking to Mary in the hall either. Maybe she ran away. That doesn't make sense. What would she accomplish by doing that? Running away from the mansion won't make her mark disappear. 
It could be her form of escape. Many kill themselves if they know they're gonna die. Or maybe... something happened to her. Like the spirit's curse. Moe saw Han Hanahiko in the mirror at the school, so she's the mark bearer with the strongest connection. It's possible that he's zeroed in on her, just like Tsukasa said. But... There's nothing we can do. Let's get ready to go. Yeah, we can't really do anything right now. Even if something happened to Moe, if we can make get the mark to vanish. That should save her, too. Let's head out. We're going back to H Elementary. We've come back to H Elementary. I know full well that in the end, this place is just a school. Let's go. Tsukasa nods silently and steps forward. We saw it earlier, but the hallway that has completely transformed. <sighs> Seeing them like this. Are roses really all that pretty? When you look close, they're scary. Huh? What's that? Tsukasa suddenly speaks up. Where? By the window. See, over there. Something sparkling. The window? All I see are rose vines. I may as well check it out, though. Hmm. Something's glinting over by the window. Looks like something buried in the rose vines. There's definitely something there. I didn't notice it before. No, maybe it wasn't there yet when I passed through earlier. That guard from bef that guard from before. Did he drop that? How would you know? You weren't here. Maybe. It might have fallen on the floor and been lifted up by the vines. It's only now that it's high enough to be spotted. If it belonged to the guard, then it could come in handy while we're investigating. He was in charge of watching this building, after all. Let's check it out. I take out the letter opener and cut the vines that are in the way. It takes some effort, but finally manage to reach the metal object. Got school keyring. Yep, it's just as we thought. These definitely belong to the guard. Keys will be extremely useful. We can get into places we... Tsukasa suddenly cuts off mid-sentence. What's wrong? Nothing. I just forgot what I was saying. Anyway, let's keep looking around. Yes, roses are evil. Evil. But pretty. It only kind of scared me. <laughs> I stick my hand aside and feel around. Something pokes my finger. I grab it and pull it out. That wire umbrella. Why pick up something like that? At least it seems to open up. Not like they'd accomplish anything. Okay. When you open an umbrella in a typhoon, it will break because the wind's too strong. So first you try to put holes in the umbrella, that way it wouldn't break in a strong wind. Note, when using it, put a plastic sheet in it to transform it to an extra strong umbrella. The strength an umbrella protects from thorns and branches blown by the wind. Is this kind of... Is this... Is this kind of... Oh, wow. Is this kind of pathetic research normal at other schools? I'm almost jealous. Well, that's just rude. What he, what's he going to be like as an adult? I know a kid did the research, but it's still silly. I have an idea. The umbrella we found earlier might have been part of the display for this research. Still, though, what's the point? I shrug and stuff it in my bag. I see the nicely folded dark plastic sheet among the garbage. <laughs> Their blood denies him. Without conscious thought, I start speaking. Blood denies him. Does that mean to repel with blood? What's the matter? Give me a second. I pop open the wire umbrella. Then I spread the plastic sheet over it. Huh, just like it said in the research paper, you can create something like an umbrella. But it's not fast and on. It'd be impossible to carry it around like this. So we'll have to hold it together to use it. Thankfully, there's two of us here. One person to open the umbrella first, and one person to spread the sheet. If we manage to combo like that, then we can use the bloodstained sheet as an umbrella. 
Sorry to make you wait. Whatever. You aren't seriously planning to use that for something, are you? I'm not sure. But I get the feeling that everything here is here for a reason. I ignore the look of suspicion from Scasa by setting the flashlight in my hand. I don't probably mind. Plants grow. You shouldn't need research to figure that out. They could have at least studied why coral become bleached. Plants don't like salt water. I ripped the research paper off the wall. Got plan to strengthen the wing. Take the plastic ball out and put it in the tank. It gurgles as it fills with water. Got a bottle of water. You're not going to drink that, are you? No, I'm not. Tells me. Remember, she's not there. She's currently strung up in her underwear. Insta boobs, yeah. I moved to seventh the classroom. And suddenly there's a strong grip on my shoulder. I glance at the hallway out of the corner of my eye. I'm pretty sure Tsukasa was on my other side. No, even if they were on this side, they'd have no reason to grab me. Live or die. C calm down, I'm just imagining things. My voice doesn't sound very convincing. Don't panic, it's an illusion. Calm down, hold it together. And I see chill envelops my right side. I turn to Sakas and open my mouth to tell them. When I do. I see a terrifying face in the darkness, then an outline lying in wait for me. I squeeze my eyes shut and pray. Just then. What are you doing? With Tsukasa's voice, the figure vanishes. I find myself standing in front of the door. The mark burns scarlet. Half an hour left until death closes in. Are you alright? Yeah. Tsukasa picks something up off my left shoulder. This is... The, ha the hand I felt gripping my shoulder was actually a rose thorn. But more importantly... Sakasa, what's the matter? You're acting kinda... Uh-huh. Something's wrong. He's not acting normal. Amnesia. My heart pangs with worry. Is Sakasa spacing out because the Mark's curse has progressed? But I don't understand. I'm still the same, at least as far as I know. Let's go. 
Right. So Gus shovels forward like a zombie. Something is seriously wrong. This is bad. Danger crept on up, crept up on us so quickly. We're running out of time. His condition might get worse. I'll figure something out. 